ferry brings Winston Churchill into New York Harbor en route to Washington. A Coast Guard cutter sidles up to the liner to take ashore the Prime Minister, Anthony Eden, and other British officials. They're here for what may be historic conferences with President Truman. To Floyd Bennett Field, New York, an auto whisks Mr. Churchill, who has a flair for hats. The President's plane, the Independence, is waiting for the British statesman, still vigorous at 77. At Washington, Mr. Churchill, whose talks with the President are to cover the full range of the world's present problems, and especially American and British relations with Soviet Russia, is greeted by Mr. Truman. In the conferences to come, they hope to strengthen friendly relations between their two countries, so that both may work for peace. Mr. Churchill says... I thank you very much indeed, you are welcome. We, we, we have only to go along together, each doing loyally its best, understanding the other's point of view and the many differences of interest between our countries, and we shall find ourselves safe at the end of the road and having, through your vast strength, brought peace and hope and salvation on earth to struggling mankind. Peace on earth is what we're both striving for. Thank you, sir. The bonds of friendship are reaffirmed as Mr. Churchill, who says he believes hopes of peace are solid, comes to Blair House as the president's luncheon guest. Boarding the presidential yacht Williamsburg, he's changed to the Royal Yacht Squadron's uniform. It's on the Williamsburg that the talks get started, and they begin with the confab between Eaton and Dean Acheson. Meanwhile, Mr. Churchill views a painting of the War of 1812. He agrees there are no hard feelings over that war as he puffs his cigar. Mr. Truman's guest book is also displayed, bearing on other pages such names as those of King George and Stalin. Then the real conferences begin, and the world awaits their results. 